Alrighty, hello everybody, and we're back with another video, and today I'm continuing the Vim series after a long hiatus from it. I've been wanting to make some Vim content, and I have some uh, nice tips and tricks up my sleeve. So today we're going to go over text objects that's it's loosely defined, and a few other interesting built-in things that Vim has, including indentation, a bit of formatting magic, and auto-completion. Yes, yes, magic auto-completion. So anyway, let's get started with uh, some nice text object commands. Now, in the last video, I, uh, well, in the Vim Tutor video, y'all learned that you can use, actually, let's open up screen key. Uh, you all learned that GJ and GK can be used to go up and down uh, visual lines, as they're called, where it's technically one line, but it's been wrapped around the editor so that it looks nice. So you can use GJ and GK to go up and down those virtual lines. And you may have also been aware of the dollar sign and the caret commands in normal and what this allows you to do is jump to the end of a line and jump to the beginning of a line now you probably may have already seen this coming but if i do dollar sign it'll jump to the end of the actual line and not the virtual line and same with the caret operator it will jump to the beginning of the actual line so if we want to jump say to the end of this virtual line right here we can prepend it um uh, we can prepend it with G, press dollar sign, and we'll jump to the end of that virtual line. And let's say go down one line, G caret, and we can go to the beginning of that virtual line. So that is how you can quickly jump to the beginning and the end of a virtual line if you need to do some quick edits. But of course, we're in a markdown document, and generally, when you're writing in a markdown document or in code, you don't really want something super long all on one line. So Vim has this really nice command and that's GQ. So if we select this block of text and do GQ, it will automatically wrap or hard wrap all of the text that we selected. So as you can see here, it's all has a new line at the end. So these are all new lines at the end and these are all individual separate lines as we can see uh, we can use J and K to go up and down them without having to use GK and GK, uh, GK and GJ to go up and down. Uh, along with this, this can also uh, be chained with an operator, so we can do something like GQ curly brace to, you know, format the next block or uh, something like two GQ curly brace, and it will also format the next two blocks. And because this is a text object, we can also do it in a visual selection and it will neatly organize all of these paragraphs. So now let's actually get started with some of the more interesting G commands. Now, the first one is GU. Now, it hasn't done anything because we have to supply it with uh, a text object. So in this case, we're just gonna do W. And as you can see, it made the L lowercase, but what GU actually does is it makes the entire uh, text, ob object, uh, text object selection lowercase. And the opposite of that intrinsically is uh, G uppercase. And we can do word and it will uppercase the entire word. And because it's an operation, we can also do something like prepend it with a four. So say we want to make the next four words uppercase. We can do four G capital U W to make the next four words capital. The same goes with lowercase four G U W and it will make them all lowercase. So that that's pretty neat and really uh, the most useful case of it that I can see is if something you have like uh, a defi uh, defined macro within like some C code and you write some macro and it's like, uh, I don't know, bruh, and then yada yada text text. And you need to, you know, capitalize the word. You can do a G. Uh, 
you can do a G U word or uh, you know if you're inside the word uh, G U I W. So same as in the Vim Tutor video with stuff like C I W, where you can uh, go into insert mode, delete the word or a D A W. So you can do that with these as well. So you know I'm in the middle of the word. I want to make it uppercase G U inside the word, and it will make it capital. So really that's what i feel like the most use for those kinds of things happens un unless you know you may have miscapitalized a word you just want to make it all lowercase um another operator we have as well is the tilde operator so if you hit tilde 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 whatever it will toggle the case of what's under the cursor of course on its own it's not super useful by itself but we can combine it with a g to again have the same behavior as our upper and lower case commands. So as you can see, we toggle the case of those. Let's say uh, toggle the case, um, uh, toggle the case of the next 30 words. So we can 30 G tilde W and the next 30 words are toggled. As you can see, uh, we go up here and this word, this A right here is lowercase. Um, so that is the tilde operator. And of course, all of these can also be applied over visual selections. So if we do G uppercase, it, uh, G capital U, it will all be uppercase. Or um, say something like we want to uh, toggle the case of that text. We can do that as well. So along with that, uh, any visual selections, there are some nice, uh, there's a nice keybind that Vim has by default. So say we toggle this case, but we actually want to make it just all lowercase for whatever reason. And you want to, you know, select the text you've already selected. Of course, you can go and manually visually select it again, but Vim has the GV operator, which allows you to reselect any visual selection that you have done and it will put it you in visual mode with what you want. So we can do G U to make it undercase, G V, uh, G V to reselect it, G uppercase, G V, uh, G tilde to toggle case. So that's the G V operator. And along with that, uh, it also does have some marks associated with it. So you can jump to these and it will show you the, uh, angle bracket marks. So the left angle bracket will jump you to the start of the line of the selection. So if we say select here, right, and then escape, uh, where we have triste, uh, triste que, or whatever, however you pronounce that in what I assume is Latin, it will jump to the line which we started that selection on. You can also do uh, back tick and then left and it will jump to the actual character it was selected on. And of course the inverse is true. Uh, right angle bracket will jump to the line of the end of the selection. A back tick angle bracket will jump to the character of the end of the selection. So now uh, let's do uh, one more text object operator that uh, G has is the join. Now, if you aren't familiar with the join command, you type capital J and it will take the previous line and append it on the line that your cursor is currently sitting on. So as you see, we have the alphabet here and pressing uh, capital J will append the lines and we can do something like this and it will all be on one line. But sometimes, and in this case, you may not want spaces. So what we can use is the G capital J operator and what that will do is the same thing as the join command but it will have no space so we can do that as well you can chain it and as you can see now we have a very normal looking alphabet uh, if you're english now uh, there's one other really cool operator that's kind of miscellaneous but still cool so if you have a visual selection and it has a sequence of numbers right so we have one 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 and we want to order it well you can do g control a 
and it will order them. It will increment them. Of course, we may want to actually just do this instead. So G control A, and as you can see, now our Vim steps little list is complete. And uh, two other really super useful <laughs> G can, uh, Vim operators, I guess, is probably the word they should be, that I should have known about so long ago is the GX and the GF. Now, what it does is if there is a URL under your cursor and you hit GX, what it will do is it will open that URL in your XDG mime defined browser. So as you can see, my YouTube, I just opened up my YouTube channel from this file so of course uh we can well because i'm still in them or we can close that window and minimize it and gx and like magic it opens up in my browser so that's really cool if you know you're browsing a readme in some source repository and want to quickly open a link that's how you do it but also there is the gf operator and what it does is it takes a file name and it opens it up in a new buffer so we just had uh if uh we're now in mandelbrot.c which is a little snippet of code i found online for uh calculating the mandelbro set but as you can see we have a commented file name in here stuff.md which is the file we originally were in so if you do gf jumps us right back into that file so that is the probably coolest g command out of them all in my opinion the ability to jump to files makes it you know say you're writing documentation or notes super super awesome super super useful now of course in this code file we're actually going to showcase another cool feature of vim and that is its tools for formatting so as you can see here, we have this little function, C function here called Mandelbro. And what it will do is uh, take in numbers, do math and spit out a Mandelbro set. But we're not really interested in the code all too much. I just Googled it and found something interesting just to paste in here. But rather we're interested in the equal sign operator. So if, if I hit equals equals, you can see the line jumped a bit. And what actually this is, is it's a tab, a four space wide tab. Now in your Vim settings, you can set your uh, settings, uh, tab stop, shift width. I have in my VimRC them set to four because four tabs is what I like and makes visual sense to me. But depending on how your VimRC is set up, what equals does is it indents any lines of text within code, right? So if we were to select these two lines and press equal, it will actually uh, indent them so that they're all the proper indentation. Of course, you can also manually change the indentation by using the left and right uh, arrow braces, angle brackets we need consistent names for those but uh so you, you can also uh put a motion so indent that by five we'll indent it uh or maybe it just takes the next few lines oh yeah visual selection five will make it go and then um using the number will take the next five lines and indent them so of course, what we can actually do is maybe we want to uh, indent inside a block. And like that, this entire block was indented within code. So as you can see, we undo and actually maybe we'll uh, go to kind of the center and kind of center it so you can see. But uh, inside the block, we want to format it. Oh, I'm in insert mode. Uh, inside the block, we want to form. Oh, uh, no, I'm going crazy. In format inside the block. Yeah. So as you can see, all of this was formatted properly inside of its brace block. So if we went out of that brace block and format inside block, uh, format inside block, and it will all format itself. So because the C code was originally uh, two spaces which 
spaces are ugly to use in code, just my opinion. But what you can do is also, you can say, go to the top of the file, do a visual selection, go to the bottom and just do equals, and it will automatically indent all of the text so it looks nice. Now, uh, this is only limited to what the Vim language file has. So definitions for your, the language you're using, for instance, this uses uh, some Vim script bundled with Vim to define C syntax highlighting and stuff like that. But generally this will work for most basic things. If you have like a giant one line C program and you need to format it out into a nice readable program, you won't have much luck with Vim's indenting because it only really works with Vim's auto indent feature. Uh, and along with that, if you're in insert mode and you have, say, some text, so I don't know, uh, double bra equals 1.01, uh, 1 .01, you can do control T while in insert to indent to increase the indent and control D to decrease the indent. So now that we have that, I'm going to show you probably one of the most interesting tricks that I've learned for Vim. So let's say, I don't know, we're in insert mode in a random part of the file. And I don't know, I want to say type out int. Of course I could type out int, but what I could do is also uh, use the control X mode. Now, uh, I don't, I, I've never really heard anybody talk about this, but this is actually what's known as the quote, auto completion mode. And what we can do is in control X, you can see a lot of different things, uh, control bracket, D E F I K L N O P S U V Y. And what all of this does is allows us to auto complete. So we can do control X, control N, and it will complete for keywords. Now, as you can see, there's iter, if, int, uh, defined again by your language file. But what we can do is click control N to go to the next item and it will complete it. Control P previous. So um, if we have something like, uh, I don't know, we want to define an int, control X, N, and N three times. And now we have an int and we can do, I don't know, my int equals 10, right? So now we just defined an integer. Now, along with that, the completion mode also has control X, control L. And what that does is across all of your buffers, it will actually allow you to complete whole entire lines. So as you can see, stuff.md has a bunch of the lines that we have just made. So as you can see, also we have all of our other variable definitions in the C code, like, you know, the stuff for the, the for loop, uh, some more variable declarations and whatnot. So you can also do control X Z, or um, I think it's control X, any completion, and say you do that, control Z can cancel the completion. Maybe not within the context of your already completing, but I do remember something like that. So what we can do is go back to our file here and a few more useful auto completion tools. So if we go back and insert mode and then do control X N, what it will actually do is only a few keywords, but it has a uh, stuff like random words that I have. So what I can do is type maybe something like uh, T I N and then control X N shows all of the words that we can complete with TIN. And interestingly enough, there's only one, but let's say we have, I don't know, something like any, right? Uh, control N. Now we only have uh, two options to complete with. So uh, maybe something like a control X N. as you can see, now we have a lot more options. And along with that, we also have a few other uh, useful stuff, uh, mainly for if you're writing. Now, if you set spell, um, if you uh, set a spell in command mode, you'll get all of this information about incorrect words. But what's actually super useful 
is control X K allows you to complete for a dictionary pattern. Um, so um, something like L control X K. Of course, I don't actually have a um, stuff like that, but uh, control X K, if you define enough words, as you can see, now we have all uh, most valid English words starting with H E L. So we have a uh, helicopter as one of those words. And now we have helicopter. It's correctly spelled. It's a dictionary word. So what we can also do is something like R E type in randomly control X S. What this does, it gives you a spelling suggestion. So what we can do is next, oh, uh, maybe it's like something like R or let's say, uh, we uh, spell wheel wrong, uh, control X. S will allow us to actually uh, find a correct version of that word. So as we can see, wheel here, we can press space and maybe, uh, I don't know, something like, uh, uh, like helicopter again, but incorrectly spelled. As you can see, the next option is helicopter and it will have it all correct for us. So there's a lot more uh, features of the completion mode that I could go over, but those are the ones I've really found to be the most useful. And you can do a help insert uh, com uh, completion, if I could type today. And it will give you some more of the actual commands that you can use in insert mode. So these are kind of all of them. But there's a whole lot. I only really find uh, the whole lines, keywords and file, and then keywords and dictionary to be super useful or the spelling suggestion. Uh, that's where I feel like I use them the most. But anyway, that is all for today's video. Uh, expect another Vim video coming out soon. I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>